What's going on, everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you my review of the new Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous DLC, Through the Ashes. So a few things to know about this DLC right off the bat is that it is sold as part of the season pass or individually for $12.99. It is a campaign that plays out separately alongside of Act 1 from the main game where we play as survivors trying to make their way through a burning down Canabras to the Defender's Heart Tavern. There's a few different motivations for this, which we'll get into. So, in addition to ourselves, which can be a custom character or one of the pre-generated characters, we will get two other companion characters of sorts via Rekarth, a tiefling rogue, and Sindri, a gnome magic user. They are important and they have to finish the DLC with you. Rekarth wants to get to the Defender's Heart Tavern, because he actually works for Anivia from the main campaign as part of her Eagle's Watch. Sindri, I can't tell you anything about without spoilers, so I'm not going to. Now, unlike the main campaign, this is a low-level adventure that focuses a lot on resources and scrounging. You're not supposed to be the big mythic hero of this story. You're supposed to be a survivor. So the mechanics kind of reflect that. Resources are scarce. You're going to have to find equipment, and you're going to have to find good equipment, as this DLC introduces introduces a lot of weapons that actually give you penalties to your attack rolls via the fact that they're not real weapons, they're like theater weapons, or they might be rusty, etc. So the act of finding good weapons and scrounging for resources is really part of the DLC, and I enjoyed that quite a bit. But in addition to that, we're going to find other survivors along the way. Now, early on, we'll have the option of hiring mercenaries or taking three pre-generated mercenaries along with us as well. They don't have stories or anything. They're just there to fill your party out. You don't even have to take them with you if you don't want to. But in addition to those characters, we're also going to run into what I like to call survivors. These are citizens that, for whatever reason, can't help you fight, but they can help you with various things. There winds up being about five of these guys, I believe it was, and each of them can help you with a task. There's a guy who can knock things over for you or just break down stuff, that type of thing. There's one who can give you cures and restorative things to help you keep up the health of the other survivors, because while you travel with these guys and use them to help you with tasks, they can become sick which requires you to tend to their wounds or they die. Now, this is primarily like diseases or just in general being sick. Or alternatively, rather than use these people to help you, you can just kill them at first convenience and take their equipment off of their bodies, as oftentimes they will have armor, etc. that you can use. So there's a bit of a trade-off. Do you be the evil person who kills them and takes their equipment? Or do you make sure they make it through the city with you and use what help they can give you? And then lastly, there is the milestone experience system. So unlike the rest of the game, you do not get experience for killing things. You get experience for discovering things, getting to certain points, overcoming certain obstacles. In fact, a lot of this particular campaign will really revolve around either avoiding combat entirely or making it significantly easier for you via springing traps on your enemies or again, just finding a way to sneak around them. Now, all of these factors together, I found made me play the game in a very different way which was pretty refreshing for someone who has beaten this game six ways to Sunday. It makes each piece of equipment feel precious, and if anything, the enemies actually feel dangerous on most difficulties now. Now, as always, you can't just turn it down to story and plow through everything if you really want to, but that's not really the intended experience. And another thing to keep in mind with this is that whatever class you choose to play your character as, is actually even more important than normal because again, you're scrounging for resources. So if you're playing a class that needs a specific weapon or you need a specific piece of gear or whatever to be effective, like say a dueling sword, etc., you probably want to avoid that. In fact, picking a class that is fairly gear undependent would be prudent. Like a kineticist, for instance, they can do damage pretty much regardless of gear and they can do it pretty effectively because gear is going to be hard to find. So anything you can do to mitigate that. In addition, as you go through, there's a lot of options. They added new enemy types. Personal favorite was the gelatinous cube. And over the course of about 10 hours, you're going to guide however many people or survivors you manage to take along with you to the Defender's Heart Tavern to pass along Rekarth's message to Irabeth from the main campaign, which was a nice little tie-in. However, I will say the story doesn't stop there. And without spoilers, I won't go into it too much. However, the story does end on a bit of a cliffhanger. And in fact, due to an interview that was given recently by Owlcat Games, we know that this story isn't actually done. 
There's apparently more DLC coming in fall as part of a second season pass, which should carry forth this story a little bit. That said, I think it will be a bit more disconnected from the main story here just comparatively speaking, not necessarily entirely. So just something to keep in mind. But overall, this is a 10-hour low-level adventure, like 1 through 5, that felt substantially different from the main campaign while allowing you to see a major event from the main campaign from a different perspective. And overall, I think that's really cool. Now, I will caution you, there's definitely some bugs present. I ran into quite a few. I actually streamed this yesterday for my channel's 50k subscriber celebration, if you will, and we definitely definitely ran into some bugs. I've also seen on Reddit, etc., where people are experiencing bugs I didn't experience. But as it stands, that's really my only real negative for this bit of DLC, as I enjoyed it quite a bit. Now, I am well aware that there are people who aren't going to like how disconnected this is from the main campaign, etc. It is supposed to bleed into the main campaign a little bit. However, I haven't actually gotten far enough to verify exactly what changes yet, so I'm in the middle of checking that out. But I do know some people aren't necessarily into these side stories. However, just as a bit of an aside, Side that doesn't have too much to do with the DLC, I would assume that Outcap might be a bit limited in what they're allowed to add to the adventure path. Because if you remember, these games are based off of actual source material, the adventure paths published by Paizo for the tabletop version. So the extent to which they're allowed to alter those adventure paths might be limited by a deal that we aren't aware of. Which is just a bit of speculation, but something to keep in mind. But overall, would I recommend this DLC? Uh, absolutely. I would maybe wait a little bit for some of the bugs to get resolved if that's really important to you. They actually launched patch 1.3 alongside this DLC for the base campaign as well, so they actually cleared up more bugs from the base campaign. However, for me, it's a definite recommend. This was a really fun story with a very unique take that I hadn't seen up to this point that made me play the game differently again, so it's hard not to recommend that, but do be aware there are definitely some bugs. That said, guys, that is pretty much all I've got for you. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. We are growing absolutely every day. And as I already mentioned, we just recently hit 50,000 subscribers. And now we are onward to 100k. So thank you. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.